City of Stevens Point Plan Commission Meeting, recorded February 6, 2023. Alright, 6 o'clock, I, uh, I have 6 o'clock on the <coughs> chronological device, so I will call the meeting to order. Um, Ryan, do you want to do a roll call, please? Wiesa. Here. Kneebone. Here. Arnson. Here. Cooper. Here. Hilton. Here. Rice. Here. Schuler. We have a quorum. Everybody is present, so we will move on. The first item is uh, item number two, the report of the December 5th meeting of the Plan Commission. Those minutes and actions were before you. Mr. Cooper. Move approval. Thank you very much. Do we have a second? Sure. I'll Seconded second. by Kneebone. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is approved. Item number two is a public hearing with subsequent action. Uh, you need me to share this. <coughs> uh, there. I am going to share, and now we're set. Uh, public hearing and subsequent action on a request from Will Sites, representing Sites Investment Properties LLC, for a conditional use permit to renovate an existing commercial building into a single family residence on the property located at 741 2nd Street North with the parcel identified in your packet, consistent with Chapter 23.02 Sub 1 Sub G Sub 16 Sub F. Adam. Thank you, Mayor. So the request before you this evening is to convert an existing uh, commercial building uh, back into a residential use, single family residential use, housing two uh, bedrooms, one bathroom. Um, so as well, we can just jump to the next slide right, right away. So historically, this building has been used as an antique shop up until about 2017, 2018. Uh, after 2018, it's uh, antique <coughs> use of the property has stopped. It was used primarily just for storage of miscellaneous things until the applicant purchased the property uh, in the latter half of last year with the intentions again to convert it into a single family residence. Uh, so you see on the pictures, uh, first image being from 1980, I believe, dating back to uh, just last week, that the exterior appearance of the building has largely uh, stayed the same except for now the removal of the former uh, freestanding sign in the front of the uh, house there. But by and large, the feel, the nature of uh, the building on the property looks like a residential home. And as part of this request, the applicant would be doing uh, not major uh, exterior renovations, mainly window replacements, siding replacements, uh, things like that. Uh, so the next slide, uh, again, just staff rec staff's recommendation to approve. Now, two main things I wanted to point out here in terms of safeguards that would be provided in relation to this project. First, since this house has, or since this property has tr traditionally been used for uh, commercial use, the building has been subject to commercial building code requirements. Now, by uh, turning it back to a single family home, the interior of the building essentially is treated like a new home. So, new. Um, new building code requirements or up-to-date building code requirements would need to be met. So that's one safeguard. Another safeguard is that the property owner, the applicant here, also owns the commercial establishment just to the south, uh, Putton Place. So at least, you know, and if there would be any problems whatsoever uh, down the road, at least the property owner is in the uh, very near vicinity to help mitigate any uh, problems that may arise. So with that, staff would recommend approval and be, would be happy to take any questions. Are there any questions before I open up the public hearing? Okay. Hearing none, I declare the public hearing open. Sean, Sean uh, Morrow, I'm the alder for this area. Um, when you see a commercial building, that's a really loose in interpretation because that house has been there forever. And um, in the 10 years that I've been an alder, I've never seen it actually open. As an, an I know there was a sign for an antique shop there, but every time I went by, it was always closed, and there was no one ever there. Um, before I was here, I did talk to the own to the owner on the north side of it, and very happy that it's going to be redone. It's been, as you said, used for used for a storage. Um, it was basically a house before it was a antique shop. Um, as I said, I would I have gone that I have been by there a few times throughout the years, and again, never saw anyone there, never saw anyone open because um, I wanted to check the place out, but um, 
um, this is a good idea. It's going to be part of that infill that folks have always wanted, and we can maybe put it back on the tax rolls <coughs> as a place. I tried to talk to the parish on the south side um, um, of the, of the uh, building as well, and no one was there. So. But I think this is a good. I think this is a good uh, plan to try to renovate the house because it is because it is kind of run down. Um, it, it hasn't really been in use for years, I don't think. So, great. Thank you. No uh, standby. I think we've got another technical difficulty. I really am not a fan when people mess with the settings. <laughs> Maria, can you tell me if this is any better? Chris, can you say yeah, something? Yeah, you, you sounded fine, but everyone else sounds like they're being picked up from your mic from far away. How about now, Maria? That sounds a lot Yeah, better. that's great. Okay, I just changed the input. Someone had changed it out, so we're good to go now. Thank you. Public hearing remains open. Public hearing is still open. And for the third and final time, the public hearing is open. Seeing and hearing no one else wishing to speak, I will declare the public hearing closed. Bring it back for action. Commissioners, what are your wishes? Commissioner Rice? Uh, move approval with staff recommendations. Thank you. Seconded by Artson. Discussion there. I, yes, sir. I did just have uh, a question uh, for, yeah, hopefully the director can answer uh, without uh, staff inspector. Schneider here, um, just related to yeah, updating building code when we're converting from one use to another. I guess um, I mean, I get my familiarity with with older homes, you know, wouldn't go through this conversion process. Typically, um, you would really only be obligated to bring components of the house up to code. Typically, when you were um, you know, making a, a significant change. Um, my understanding is that this is pretty different and effectively this, I mean, the entirety of the home needs to be brought up to existing code. Um, my question, I, I guess, is maybe less related to this spe specifically and maybe more broadly, but um, I'm just curious to talk about that and, and maybe the implications of that and how it um, would potentially deter people from, from taking actions like these uh, on properties that, that maybe could be turned into residential uses, um, but are like, does it seem like a significant um, yeah, deterrent, I guess, in, sure. in situations like this? So because of the, the parcel, the, the specific structure on there was utilized originally as a residential property, when it was converted to a commercial use, it fell under the International Building Code, IBC. Okay. Um, and so, uh, when that specific use changes, they fall under the commercial requirements. When you convert it back to residential, you fall under a separate um, set of building code regulations, the Universal Dwelling Code, or UDC. Um, and because the previous use was commercial, uh, now when you flip it back to residential, you have to meet the current codes of today. As opposed to if you were, uh, let's say, renovating a property, um, <clears throat> and this is something that came up more recently, uh, the ceiling height didn't meet specific requirements to the 2021 UDC, uh, we could look at uh, the year that the home was built and determine that because in 1950, ceiling heights could be seven feet and not eight feet, um, <clears throat> that as you renovate that, that that specific room or that specific area could still be utilized as a bedroom for an example um, so when you do convert from commercial to residential you do have to meet the the new standards of the universal dwelling code okay. thanks for asking anything else yes sir the lot is kind of an odd lot does that give us any possibilities for anything or is it just the way it is it's just the way, it's just it, is. The way it is it is an odd lot I'll give you that but we've got a few of those in the city. Yes, we do. Somewhere, sometime, someone thought it was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know which staff signed off on that lot school, but I'd like to have a conversation with yeah. them. Yeah. I, I would blame John Gardner. If John I Gardner, yeah. <laughs> oh, my guess goes a, little, goes a little bit further back than John. John goes back to what, 1927? <laughs> all right. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is approved. Item number four is a request from David Pedelty. Did I get that right? Yep. 
uh, representing Corda Stevens Point 2 LLC for a site plan review to construct a drive through coffee <coughs> building on a property located at 5707 US Highway 10 East with the parcel identified in your packet consistent with chapter 23.02 sub 2 sub E sub 5. And Adam, you're on. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so the request before you tonight is to construct a 670 square foot building that will house uh, Scooters drive through Coffee. And just a little context on Scooters drive through Coffee. Um, this is not the first of their establishments here in the state. There's a couple within Green Bay Metro, a couple within uh, the Fox Valley. But if I'm not mistaken, this is the first, at least in north central Wisconsin, where, um, where there will be a, a Scooters franchise here in the uh, north central part of the state. Uh, so going a little bit here on the site plan <coughs> itself, you can see the proposed building located roughly smack dab in the middle of the uh, about uh, three quarters of an acre parcel. Uh, you have the two drive through, or two travel lanes, the interior lane being for the drive through lane, the exterior lane being more for navigability in and out of the lot, uh, seven offs seven off uh, street parking stalls located on the eastern side of the parcel and then of course the trash enclosure located on the far southeast corner of the property. Uh, so similar to many of the other site plan reviews that uh, this commission has been reviewing over the last few months, um, this property is zone B5, it's along Highway 10 and anytime there's a construction of a new building in addition onto an existing building, there is a site plan review that's automatically required per our zoning code looking more so in terms of uh, parking lot ac parking lots, access to and from the site, really ensuring that in a case like this, that tra uh, traffic going into the property is coming off of a secondary street, not off of directly Highway 10. So in this case, uh, traffic is coming off of Elizabeth Avenue and the slide that the mayor has on the screen right now shows the private driveway as part of all three phases of this development. Uh, so currently for this project, for scooters, there will be the private drive-through, or the private driveway that will be terminate, uh, terminating into a turnaround along the eastern lot line. When the time comes down the road, that lot two and lot three, lot two being in the northeast corner, uh, lot three being the <coughs> southern half or so. Once those two parcels are developed, then at that point, uh, the private driveway will be extended out up to essentially what you see on what you see shown on the screen, minus a couple uh, exceptions, namely the turnaround at the very end. Uh, so staff uh, within this department, within other city departments, have reviewed this thoroughly and have. <coughs> Several comments listed as conditions here uh, in terms of staff's approval to uh, recommend this site plan review. So with that, I'll kick it back to the group and be happy to take any questions. Commissioners? What are your wishes? Commissioner Schuler? Let's, oh, you go ahead. Um, we have to have a motion before we can do the, mm -hmm. okay, so since it's in my district, I will move to approve subject to staff recommendations and conditions. Okay, we have a second, seconded by Schuler. Discussion? Yes, sir. A uh, question I had, th this is completely uh, drive-through service with no inside service, correct? Correct. And then um, I didn't see it on the site plan, but I was curious if there was gonna be um, an order board uh, with a remote order board on site and how that might impact queuing for the for that. Good evening, Eric Drazkowski with Excel Engineering, uh, 100 Camelot Drive, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Um, uh, for this location, I just confirmed there's not going to be an order board uh, at this location. So, so strictly through the window and correct, and no walk-ups either. So okay. just through the window and drive through. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Alder Nebo, go ahead. Uh, I know uh, some of the neighbors in the area are concerned about uh, a lot of light because it's fairly dark out there and it's a nice area for dark skies. I wonder what kind of lighting and if it could be the kind that doesn't pollute the skies but focuses light where it's needed. Correct. <coughs> There'll be full cutoff uh, fixtures. Uh, the lighting, I believe we submitted a photometric, does not extend over the property lines uh, past the code requirements. So, 
it's hard to read, but page 66 <laughs> is the photometric plan. But yeah, I mean, as <coughs> Eric mentioned, once you get to the lot lines, it's you know, the foot Basically candles zero. read essentially 0, 0.0, so yeah. there wouldn't be a concern. And that's absolutely. pretty far west right now. Um, yeah. And there's still the tree, tree screening there for now. Motion to race? Yeah, I think it's just a question for city staff. Um, obviously, this uh, this business is, is pretty similar to the, um, the Caribou Coffee drive-through we saw recently go in on the north side of Stevens Point. Um, I'm guessing this is maybe a, a kind of continuing trend where we're seeing these these kind of drive-through only service type businesses. Um, I mean, I look at at the map of the vicinity and and I see these relatively small buildings surrounded by. Um, parking lot and um, when it just strikes me as as odd um, but like in this instance um, in this use uh, it reminds me of what maybe we saw a kind of a trend maybe a decade or a decade and a half ago with with even smaller kind of kiosk style drive up um, businesses and I guess I'm curious how those existed basically in parking lots and is there opportunity uh, when something like this arises to basically allow this business to maybe not have to buy a, a undeveloped lot, but simply locate into what we know is, I don't know, a quarter square mile of parking lot that already exists to, to the like immediate southwest of here. Um, I realize there's, there's complications with utilities and infrastructure as well. Um, I'm, I'm just guess, in this instance, maybe, or, or down the road, are, are there opportunities for us to look at um, a kind of existing parking lot to, to locate, uh, again, uses maybe more specifically like this, where it's, it's drive up only, we don't need a lot of additional parking on site. Um, yeah, again, curious of your thoughts uh, on that. Yeah, I, I think from staff's perspective, reutilizing an underutilized parking lot like that's out in the former Cops Walmart site would have been a preferred option. Um, obviously, the market dictated something else. Uh, and so within our zoning code, we could uh, give preference to redevelopment of parking lots for uses like this. Um, I, I definitely think it's something that we could look at uh, and see what other communities are doing as well. Uh, we have, I think, one or two one for sure um, where they were almost 100 square foot uh, facilities that were kind of plopped down in the middle of parking lots the I forget the name Mom of it. Mode. Yes, um, that's in the parking lot of Quick Trip and, and uh, Save a Lot Foods. Um, those structures are actually more temporary in nature than they are permanent, although right. it's been there for 10 30 years. <laughs> I mean, it's been a Rainbow long time. was another good example if yeah. you've been around a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so because they're temporary in nature, uh, they don't meet the specific requirements of, like, stormwater management, um, sure. things of that nature. And we, we have a, a much different inspection department uh, now than we did 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, who I think would, would not be as in favor of those types of facilities. Sure. I assume a lot of the existing parking lot is <clears throat> connected to the parcels that, that have the, the commercial buildings on them, so that would take some additional kind of reorganizing, rezoning uh, as well if we wanted to pursue that. But I would right. think that the change, uh, fairly recent change in uh, parking requirements would maybe kind of aid us and the department in, in moving in that direction. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments? Yes, sir. These uh, <clears throat> ditch checks, those are just to keep the water from carrying sediment and filling up the, the Holding pond, is that what those things are? Yeah, that, those are just temporary during construction. Okay. Those are removed once the grass grows. Okay. Anything else? Check online. No. All right. Seeing and hearing no further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that's approved. Item number five, Thank a you. request from Angela McEtherin. Also representing Corda LLC, Corda Stevens Point LLC, for a signed variance to install a wall sign at a property located at 5657 Highway 10 East, the parcel identified in your packet, consistent with Chapter 25.14. Adam? Thank you, Mayor. So the request before you all is to install one wall sign on the west facing wall of the building. This proposed wall sign being approximately 200 square feet inside in size and co would coincide with 
a Hobby Lobby, the new commercial tenant that is planning to occupy uh, this portion of the building here. So if we go to the next slide right away, we'll just give a little glimpse as to the proposed sign, top side being the signage itself, uh, bottom side of the screen showing the uh, proposed sign relative to uh, the building itself. You see really most of this building is staying the same except for that addition that, this plan, that the plan commission approved back in December uh, via site plan review. So going on the next slide, going more into the uh, nitty gritty and into our sign code, when anybody uh, rec submits a sign permit to install a, a wall sign in this case, uh, one of the first things that staff has to take a look at is, is this a standalone building or is this a really a, a strip mall housing more than one commercial tenant spaces? And in the case like, in the case of this building here housing Hobby Lobby, there's Hobby Lobby taking the top roughly two thirds of the building and then two planned tenant spaces on the southern end of the building. So when it, in the context of this, knowing it's a strip mall, there is a code provision that says that each tenant space is allowed 100 square feet of wall signage. Now there are some exceptions that's shown on the screen and I won't get into the specifics there, more so if it's a corner uh, tenant space. But the issue in regards to this uh, request is that our sign code is fairly explicit in that for a shopping center like this, um, housing more than one tenant spaces, it all is located within the confines of one parcel, one property. In the case for here, you do actually have a par uh, property line running through the middle of the building, essentially delineating Hobby Lobby to the north of the lot line, the other two tenant spaces to the south. So unfortunately, this 100 square foot a wall sign allowance would not apply. They'd be subject to essentially what our sign code says for a standalone commercial space. And what our sign code does say in the context of this, of this is that for a standalone commercial, spa uh, commercial space, they would be allowed one square foot of wall sign per one lineal foot of street frontage. Case like here for Hobby Lobby, Technically, they have no street frontage. All access to Hobby Lobby is by way of private driveways connecting Elizabeth <coughs> Ave, Amber Ave, uh, Highway 10, Berlowski farther to the west. So under a literal interpretation of our sign code, technically Hobby Lobby would be allowed zero square feet of wall signage. So in the context of a variance request, is a hardship present? I think this is arguably the most clear example of a hardship, prohibiting a, a commercial store to have no uh, wall signage whatsoever. Uh, and one thing I would note just before kicking it back to the commission is that this arguably would be a temporary uh, sign variance and that long term, once there's more increment generated for this TID when the city has the ability to extend Elizabeth Ave farther south, they would be compliant with our street or with our sign code and that there would be more than 200 street of uh, 200 feet of street frontage. So it would be more just a temporary measure until Elizabeth Ave is extended part to the south. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? What kind of sign was up there before when cops was in there? It was a wall sign too, but honestly I couldn't tell you why that was approved at the time unless the sign code changed was different then than what it is now. Yeah, that was but, up <laughs> quite a few years ago. And yeah. Mm -hmm. It's possible it was an oversight. Who yeah. really knows? Maybe the exception was granted. Uh, we could certainly research it, but I think it's kind of irrelevant for this request. Well, it's kind of a good idea to let a merchant put a sign up so people know where to shop. Yeah. If the sign code was the same back when cops opened, it was very likely they were granted an exception to, to make that happen because of the fact that they literally have no street frontage. <coughs> yes, Commissioner. Uh, does staff feel like handling this type of request through variance is the way to go, or should there be anything in the sign code that's looked at to accommodate strange circumstances like this? Um, my opinion, I think the variance would cover it more so because this is a unique situation in and of itself. Um, this is the only commercial <coughs> lot that I'm aware of that's technically landlocked, doesn't landlocked, uh, that doesn't have any street frontage. So, and I think that's kind of the purpose of a variance is to allow for those one in a more of those unique circumstances. So, I think that would be 
Would it be a similar circumstance for the two bays to the south on the separate parcel? They would each be allowed the 100 square feet of wall signage because there's uh, more than one tenant space within the same okay. uh, within the same parcel. The wonkiness of our sign code. Thank you. <laughs> uh, need a motion? Since it's my district, I'll move to approve subject to staff recommendations and... Thank you, Alderperson Nebo. Do I have a second? Seconded by Elton. Discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Can make it across. And that is approved. Item number six, yeah, discussion on the city off. comprehensive plan update. Um, our Chris Claysmith has been working diligently <laughs> and has uh, some information to share with us. So Chris, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, not just me, the, the entire department's been working um, pretty diligently on updating the comprehensive plan. Uh, since our last update, which Jeff, I have photos in here for you this time. Um, the, the last time we reported out an update on the comprehensive plan was following the block party for Gerke Washington. Um, and so today I'm just going to give you a quick update on where the Gerke Washington section of the plan is at. Um, I do have some information about the downtown district to report back on and I just wanted to touch base on the, on the timeline for the comprehensive plan update. Um, so back up at Gerke Washington, um, actually you had a typo in here, uh, the four sections of the Gerke Washington plan were discussed at a recent uh, neighborhood meeting. We had uh, 10 residents attend, um, provide some uh, feedback in the moment and all of these, uh, I guess the plan that was presented to you that you have uh, in front of you tonight was also delivered to all of the uh, survey respondents from Gerke Washington um, for an opportunity to provide feedback. Um, this is an ongoing process that will continue to, to change and so we, we did um, solicit some feedback on the process from, from residents and we'll be adjusting accordingly to uh, prepare some presentation information and deliver that ahead of time to our residents and we will be re voice recording a presentation and sending that to folks um, from the neighborhood ahead of time. And so at this point um, we will be um, headed towards a workshop on February 16th, um, again with the Gerke Washington neighborhood to bring a lot of the, the four sections that we had previously discussed together. Um, another two sections of the um, comprehensive plan um, sections that we need to incorporate uh, into a land use workshop with the Gerke Washington neighborhood. So the uh, Gerke Washington section of the comprehensive plan should be coming to sort of a conclusion and we'll move forward to um, neighborhood strategizing. Um, for downtown, um, as a brief update, we intended to not follow the, the same format for downtown because of the unique makeup of downtown and I just wanted to let you know that the uh, business improvement district was uh, adopted for the downtown and will be having their first board meeting tomorrow. Um, that body has a lot of potential to leverage state resources that may result in uh, strong strategy support from the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. So that might influence the, the process for, for downtown. So we're on the next slide. Just a, looks like some of the text didn't make it across because Adam and I had some different formats. Um, we're in that first line of that gray bar where everything is starting to come together that we're drafting. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that it's not a time-bound timeline, so we're not trying to complete this at a fast and hard end of 2024 deadline, but that is sort of the goal is to have these written and completed by then and able to be redrafted as needed. Um, so commissioners, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, or Ryan or Adam, if there are any more updates that you'd like to provide. 
Uh, just real quick, you did receive a draft copy. Um, <clears throat> I think oftentimes when we go through comprehensive planning or other planning documents, when we bring something to a, a body like this in draft form, sometimes we get uh, stuck with looking at things like punctuation and word usage. Instead of doing that at this form, uh, please review it, email Chris, myself, or Adam, or all three of us if you feel so inclined, uh, with your comments, suggestions, and changes. Um, if you have any other questions that are kind of bigger picture, uh, that this would be an appropriate time to discuss that. How many neighborhood, um, I guess, sessions or little modules do you plan on holding? So we'll have this next um, workshop coming up. From beginning to end, we've had four, if we include the, the tour, the block party, the uh, block party backup sessions that we split up. Um, the neighborhood walking tour and the most recent neighborhood workshop. So at minimum we'll have two more. We'll have this next land use workshop and then one to follow up to discuss the plan as it comes back together. I'd expect another one to come after that because there'll probably be some more feedback to be given at that last session, especially as we tie in partners. Um, We've been keeping other departments up to speed as we've been updating these sections for Gerke Washington, and so far it's everything's been in line with other planning documents and other planning efforts, which has been pretty phenomenal. Um, not a lot of controversy in any of the sections. Um, and partners like the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, as we're planning around the, the campus and planning with them, has all been very helpful. Okay, so all of this effort has been Gerke Washington so far? Yeah. And so how many more? neighborhoods will you be doing this in? So the downtown we're kind of excluding in that one special section. They'd be the second of eight, and there's six more then following Gerke, Washington. OK. And um, you're going to have a relatively similar process for each neighborhood to go through? Correct. Uh, you said you're doing something a little different for the downtown. Yeah. OK. This first process has been um, a little more rougher around the edges, and it's been Great to go one. through it this way, yeah. um, because I think going into the next few, we'll have areas that we can definitely reduce the amount of time it takes to move between steps. And I want to thank uh, Director Konoski and Adam for their assistance in bringing that forward. And so when you're done with all of the neighborhoods, what type of results are you going to have? And then how do, what's the next step after that? Because obviously that's a somewhat preliminary before you get into what it has to be the larger document for the city, right? Right. So as we're lining this up with other planning documents, I, th I think that there is action that will be occurring immediately following neighborhood level plans uh, coming forward. Um, if you'll recall the strategic plan that was adopted in last year, there are sections that um, call out specific neighborhood level action. Um, and why we started with Gerke Washington was that Stanley Street corridor area was identified as a priority area for the city of Stevens Point. And so that process will um, involve inviting in some of the residents who have taken part in this process to help facilitate leadership of that work within the neighborhood. OK. And um, how long do you think it will take you to get through all the neighborhoods? So this first process has taken us a little bit longer than we had expected. Has it started when? We started technically September okay. of 2022. Um, we'll look to wrap up this one midsummer 2023. Um, leading into the next few neighborhoods, we're hoping to stack them to have two or three neighborhoods running at a time and move through those process, processes a little faster. OK. Yeah. Any other questions? That's it for now. I'm just curious, how do you feel about participation at this point in this first, yeah, this first run? And, and, and do you have strategies for kind of improving that? Obviously, that's a big point of, of this endeavor is to, you know, get the, the neighbors and constituents of these specific neighborhoods, you know, get their ideas. Um, I think that was the goal of the city, you know, in pursuing this. And so, so I'm curious, how, how is it going? Do you feel like in this first run, and, and what opportunities do you see for these future neighborhoods? Yeah, um, was very uh, happy to see the, the residents 
uh, take part in the effort strongly right away. Uh, with this most recent, um, I guess, presentation or neighborhood meeting, uh, a little bit underwhelmed with the amount of attendees, but uh, there was a lot of feedback about how we could um, navigate that uh, situation, this last one. So, as I mentioned before, we'll be recording and distributing out a, a sure. uh, summarized presentation to all residents so that they can provide feedback um, on their own accord rather than attend the evening session. We did survey the neighborhood about common meeting times or most preferred meeting times, and we have already been meeting at that time, so we're going to continue with that. Sure. Um, and the, the outreach asks that um, were presented for the block party weren't continued on into that first um, neighborhood meeting that we had where we had 10 attendees. Um, so this next uh, land use workshop we think is arguably a little bit more important for folks to attend, to contribute, and to be a part of. Um, we have sent out a mailing this time around too okay. uh, to the neighborhood. So we're going to continue to evaluate the efficacy in getting residents engaged, right. um, and hopefully we'll continue to improve that. Thank you. Yep. Anything else? OK, one more. All right, one more. <laughs> so your um, desired outcomes for the land use workshop, what would you say they would be? So twofold, I think. One, we want to bring residents into a, a into a space where they can ask some questions of the university and of end of staff about the, um, I guess, elements that we need to consider when we're thinking about land use within the neighborhood. The second thing, and, and maybe this is more of a priority, is um, we have those strategic planning documents, but not a significant amount of the residents were engaged about you know, Stanley Street turning into a commercial corridor. So this is an opportunity to bring them in to say this this section of the city should should continue to grow that way, or it shouldn't. And so hopefully we'll have a pretty strong determination about how that area should change within Gerkey, Washington, and with, along Main Street on the south end of Gerkey, Washington. So I assume all these neighborhoods will be a mosaic of suggested changes to the city's future land use document. Essentially, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think you know, Commissioner Schuler, um, that and you know, this being a washed up urban planner yourself, um, <laughs> is that the, the future land use map is probably one of the most critical components of any comprehensive plan. And really, what we want to ensure that the residents that they, they, they understand that they get the buy in for it, they understand what the various future land uses could be or should be and really what is your what do you want your neighbor to look in 20 years 30 years or 40 years so um, I think that's where the workshop and kind of the activities I'll call them that we have planned around uh, the future land use component uh, is going to be really exciting for the residents but also kind of balancing the city's needs through that future land use as well we know that there's a desire for a park within the neighborhood especially on the north side that if you look at our 10-minute walk to a park campaign uh, that that's an area that we need we need a, a park facility we also need to um, look at a, a well in that specific area, and that's got to be part of the overall <coughs> conversation. And you know, how do these larger city functions fit within the puzzle of that neighborhood? I, I think it'll be part of the overall discussion. So, I don't think you're washed up either. He quit on his own terms. I know. Huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody's that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? Yes. I, d I like the, the way that we're approaching <coughs> this, going, starting from the bottom up, rather than imposing something from the top down. Um, because every neighborhood is a little different, and everyone has different opportunities and um, different um, problems to deal with. So uh, coming at a comprehensive plan from looking at all the pieces, I think, is, is really a great idea. So we're doing something right. Yeah, that, that's one of the things that they were trying to do during this process is take some more unconventional routes. Yeah. You know, intimidating meetings like this, people <laughs> don't necessarily want to show up and, you know. It depends on your sign, I guess. I guess it depends on your sign, your zodiac sign, yes. Um, you know, but a, a meeting environment is not the most conducive to creativity. 
right? This is kind of a formal, you know, rows and and a big board up here, um, trying to engage with the people in the neighborhood at their level in their environment. Mm -hmm. um, I think is a, a pretty unique way to do it. Okay, so. yeah, absolutely. Alrighty. <clears throat> well, we'll have more information as we progress, and I would encourage anybody watching or listening to uh, participate, attend some of these neighborhood meetings, and uh, tell your friends. Alrighty. Uh, next up, item number seven, the December 22 and January 23 monthly reports. Director. Those are included in your agenda packet. Uh, really nothing of too much significance. Our permit numbers were up through 2022. You'll see that our valuation was a little lower compared to 2020 and 2019. Although our permits are up and our valuation is down, that continues to indicate to us that people uh, and folks still intend or are still working on their homes. Uh, these <coughs> would include permits like new windows, roofing, um, uh, water heaters, things of that nature. And if you look into January 2023, we're already doing pretty well compared to where we've been in the past. So uh, nothing sticks out as a concern to uh, city staff would recommend approval. Okay. Any questions for the director? No. Then I would seek a motion to accept the report and place it on file. Move to accept. Thank you. Do a second. Seconded by Arnson. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. And what do you want to report on? Uh, just a few things. So all of our major projects continue to move forward uh, exceptionally well, uh, given the current environment. Um, next month, please expect a longer meeting than this. Uh, we'll have things like definition of family discussion. Uh, there's a, going to be a, a hotel uh, up for consideration as well, among other things. And then finally, uh, our own Mr. Kuhn obtained his AICP certification. So uh, he's now an official planner, I guess. Uh, so congratulations to Adam um, and, and working through that process. Oh, so one quick question. What does AICP stand for? American Institute of Certified Planners. No, oh, I wanted to Aww. ask Ryan. <laughs> American uh, Institute of Certified Planners. Did you know Planners. it? Oh, yeah, I knew that. American <laughs> <laughs> Competent <laughs> City Planners. I believe you still have to be three years in the field before you or can apply to take the exam, or did they change that since I... It varies based off of like schooling, Direct what level, uh, if it's a cred from an accredited school. It's a lot school. easier to get now than it was. <laughs> I'm just saying. We, we would it, never it was, leave. Back in the day, it was hard. We would never leave Adam in the field for mine. three years. The exam was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> all that's, right. that's all I have to report. Uh, our agenda is exhausted. So unless there's anything else, we are adjourned at 642. Fun. Video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.